startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. If you're new here to our podcast, just make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. This time I'm bringing you again an interview with the accelerator program of the German Book Publishers and Printers Association, der Börsenverein des Deutschen Buchhandels. The accelerator program is called Content Shift. And this time, finally, yes, we got the winner here. We have Carsten here, the co-founder of SciFlow. Welcome. Thanks, Joe, for having me. Great to be here. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And for everybody who's thinking like I did, I'm a big science fiction geek. Um, I think I spend like 20 hours a week listening to um, audio podcasts and sci-fi sci books, especially before I fall asleep. You guys are not related to science fiction. And that's exactly the point where half of the audience will drop out, right? I hope not. Science is, science is uh, yeah, it's uh, worth to talk about that too. Yes, you guys are actually related to real science. But let us talk a little bit about you first. You guys are right now based in Berlin, but I've stalked you in LinkedIn. And as always, if you guys go down here in the show notes, there will be a link to our blog post. And in the blog post, there is a link to your personal LinkedIn profile so people can reach out to you directly. Um, I've seen you've been with pretty big names. You've been a software quality engineer. You you did IT sales with uh, well-known companies like Battlesman and Oracle. But actually, you did a PhD in marketing as well. So um, take us a little bit through your journey, how you ended up with a PhD and then starting to found a company because that's a little bit uncommon, I do believe. But... Um, not so much for scientific oriented startups, which you don't have so much here in our podcast, but we'll have more there. It is pretty common. And I would actually count you a little bit into the science related startups. Enough said for me. Let's talk. So yeah, just to give you a little bit of my background. So after school, um, yeah, uh, I didn't really know what to do. But for me, the only thing that was um, obvious is that um, I wanted to work in the IT industry and um, I didn't know exactly what to do. So, so I thought it out it would be a good idea to, to just, just to learn how to develop software. And I did that um, for three years. And after that, I realized I'm not going to be the best software developer ever and um, did an internship in South Africa and um, and got close to, to IT consulting. And after that, went to Bertelsmann, where I worked at Software Quality Engineers. So I had to basically uh, crash software. <laughs> that, that, was a, that, was a, that was a lot of fun. It was yeah, great doing this. Um, but but still, um, I got the idea so that maybe if, if development is not my thing and the quality engineer, it's It's nice, but it's just not me doing this. Um, um, it would be a good idea to stay in the IT industry, but work more in sales. And then I applied for Oracle at the sales position. Um, yeah, I was very lucky and very humble that I got uh, got selected um, and hold a position as account manager there for five years. And so Oracle gave me really the opportunity to um, get to know IT software sales. Um, and that's a skill set I definitely um, can use um, as an entrepreneur um, at Cyflow right now. Um, so, um, yeah, was was a good experience there. And during during my time at Oracle, I also did a PhD in, in marketing. So I actually had a look at um, how the sales model from Oracle uh, develops um, during the time when, did, when they did uh, buy a lot of companies. So, so Oracle did over 100 um, acquisition, uh, acquisitions. Um, and and uh, yeah, and I, I had a look during my PhD thesis 
how how the sales model from from uh, Oracle developed during that time. Just for um, the geeky part of our audience, yes, I'm not a coding geek, I'm a science fiction geek, but nonetheless, what type of uh, programming languages do you use for coding? Oh, well, I started with C um, and then did a little bit of Java as well. But this is, yeah, <laughs> 20 years, uh, yeah, 20 years past now. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, more than 20 years ago, I started out in school with coding and I started with Turbo Pascal. No, I never got beyond uh, Visual Basic for applications, but at least I did a little bit of it. Um, then you especially learn how difficult that could be. Um, talking about crashing software, you got any tricks um, how to best crash software as a, quali a software quality engineer? <laughs> so I think the, the most important thing is um, the goal of of testing software is not to show that the software is perfect and has no mistakes. The goal is to find those errors because those errors are in there. There is no software which don't have an error, um, I guess. And it's really about how to find them. And of course, it's an engineering discipline. So there is a structured uh, process of, um, of writing test cases and execute them. Um, but I think the, the most important thing to keep in mind that every software has errors and they just need to be fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I was wondering, then you did, held a position with the Free University of Berlin, Freie Universität Berlin. What did you do there? Um, so right now, um, I'm actually hold a position right now. Um, it, it's sort of an alumni association for the startups from the FU Berlin. So when we started SciFlow, we were in close contact with two universities, the University of Magdeburg and the Freie Universität Berlin, and both supplied various support for, for SciFlow. Um, at first, an office, uh, very important if you start up, that you have a place to go and not work all the time from home. <laughs> but, also, but also in terms of um, um, business model development and, yeah, and getting in touch with some people for, um, for various things you need to keep in track as an entrepreneur, like marketing, sales, etc. And those, those universities really helped us. And at Freie Universität, they have sort of an alumni association for all their uh, startups and I had a position there and it's called Founder Circle and it's, it's just something where we meet once a month or every two months and um, talk about a topic that is relevant for all entrepreneurs. Um, last time we had it last weekend we talked about um, a branding and brands and it was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so you have been a professional software crasher. You also sold some software and you did a PhD in marketing. And then you ended up with a startup company. What, what took you there? How did you get the idea? How did you bump into the problem you want to solve? Oh, well, um, so first of all, um, Probably I always wanted to start a to start a startup, and this is really something that was always one of my one of my dreams. What I wanted to do, and during my during my master's study, uh, I ran into a guy named Frederik Eichler. He's co-founder of SciFlow, and that was 2009, so a long time ago actually. And he is a software developer, and he had this idea um, for a software that could help students. Um, to write their their master or bachelor thesis, so he 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 had this problem that he always had to help his um, his uh, 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 student uh, his fellow students um, with all the formatting in Word. So when writing a bachelor or master thesis, um, students always had to keep in mind that the formatting is right, that the footnotes are on the right page, that the citation style is a correct applied, and so on and so on. A lot of things to keep in mind, actually. And Frederick helped his fellow students with that. And as a software engineer, um, he had the idea to automate this. Um, and that was like the the birth, uh, the birth day, uh, the, the, yeah, Cypher was born on, on that day. Um, because he thought, 
okay, if it's possible um, that students would use a text editor that is just designed for scientific writings, a lot of things could be automated. For example, the creation of the formatting. And yeah, as I said, this was back in 2009. Um, we knew each other then and um, were thinking about to, to start a um, startup then actually. But it turned out um, we went to, yeah, we went to the um, corporate world. Um, he was with Kat Gemini. I was with Oracle. And then 2014, um, we met again um, during the time I was writing my PhD thesis. And I had to admit that actually not much changed in the last five years. So from 2009 to 2014, and there was still no, let me say, tool that could really support researchers, students in writing their thesis. So, of course, um, uh, Joe, you, you mentioned the geeks out there. They will know Latish. They will know Latish for sure. And this is probably the most, this is something very common to write um, um, research with, but there is also like most most students and, and researchers um, still would use Microsoft Word and and this is um, this is something really strange because Microsoft Word was really never designed to do to for for scientific writing and yeah as I as I said in, from 2009 to 2014 nothing changed there was no tool there which could really support researchers and students so 2014 we decided that we want to start Cyflo we want to um, do something we want to support. Um, those researchers and students out there in, in um, um, publish their research. There's, there must be a better way to publish their research. And then 2016, we started with SciFlow in full time. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I really had to smile uh, going back to the times of my master thesis. And um, when you said uh, Microsoft Word wasn't meant to write scientific papers, um, actually, sometimes with the formatting, it feels like it was never meant to write anything on it. <laughs> um, uh, I I know LaTeX LaTeX LaTeX. Um, it's it's a scientific language to actually get the the holy fancy stuff like the graphs and the formulas in there. Okay, now we are at the point in your life where you guys first met, want to found a startup back in 2009, which is by now 11 years in the past. And then you, for some reason, did start it anyway. What was what was the type of um, event? What triggered to actually get to get to start working, get to the doing? Because you can talk about startup ideas all day. Um, I do believe um, there had to be a trigger, something that actually did start to um, did kick off the uh, the founding of the company, right? Yeah, you're right. There, there was a trigger, and it, uh, I remember that day actually. So it was it was a summer day in 2014, and I was really frustrated um, with writing my PhD thesis because I I, um, I tried Latish, I tried Word, and both software didn't work probably as as I wished they would work. And um, Frederick and I, we sat on my balcony outside and, and having a beer. And I was like, Frederick, from 2009 to 2014, nothing changed. There is still Microsoft Word. There is still Latish. But this is not something I would use to write my PhD thesis. It doesn't make my life easier. And then I told him that I was thinking about, that I had to think about SciFlow and that I actually wished that I would, could that use that tool right now to write my PhD thesis. And that was like the trigger moment where we, where we start looking for first um, funding, first scholarships and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you go on the website, there is actually, you have some uh, templates there already. You have different um you have different scientific manuscript templates like American Physical Association, ACS, AMA, Chicago, the German way of quoting, Deutsche Zitierweise, IEEE, and so on and so forth. And you have uh, already journal templates there. Um, what 
is the logic behind it and for the people out there listening to it and uh, getting more or less excited or they're tired of using any tool at their hands to really um, start with a PhD, their master thesis, their senior thesis, whatever. Um, can you take us a little bit through uh, what you would expect as, as a client? What is your ideal customer journey, something like this? Yeah, okay. So one of the key things um, we wanted to make sure in SciFlow is that students and researchers can focus on what is important to them. They're actually research, the actual research. And they don't need to worry too much about the formatting or even saving or the versioning of their documents. So we wanted to simplify the writing and publishing workflow. And you mentioned the templates, and these are one of this is one of the key features in SciFlow. Um, as a researcher, I can go to the SciFlow homepage and um, select a manuscript of style or a journal template that um, that I would like to use for writing my research. For example, if I already know that I write, want to write in Nature, um, that I can choose the Nature template from SciFlow. But if I'm not sure yet, um, and I'm um, with where where I want to publish, and just wanna just want a template that that is um, that is common in my research discipline, for example, you mentioned IEEE, then I just select that template and start writing. And I don't, and during writing, I don't have to worry about the formatting, not at all. You just focus on the writing, and when you're done, you click a ex you click a button, the export button. And with that one click of a button, SciFlow takes all your text that you've written and put it in the right format. Um, and there are various output formats you can think of. So, for example, for those journal templates, we export a Word document that is ready for the submission to the publisher. But for a student, of course, you don't want to export a Word document from SciFlow. You, you, want, you would like to have a beautiful formatted PDF that you can take directly to the to the um, to a copy shop and print it out to to get it done <laughs> and yeah um, so we have different different types of exports in SciFlow and um, this is one of the key features and of course it's very it's very important to mention since um, researchers um, usually don't write their papers alone but in a team that SciFlow is um, collaborative so um, multiple authors can write at the same version of SciFlow at the same time. Yeah, so that that's why um, I always, to put it in simple words, you can imagine like SciFlow like a Google Docs for researchers for academia and with publishing capabilities. I think this is yeah um, close to to what we trying to do there. I had a lot of thoughts going through my head when you've been talking because at the versioning, yeah, I remember late nights working on some papers. Uh, I've said this beautifully. Where is it? Where is it? What was the version? Did, oh, damn. Did I save it? No, I don't. I did not save it. So that's all a thing of the past, right? With your, with your tool, basically you save it online and you can do and undo any step again. Yeah, exactly. So formatting is a thing of the past. You don't need to do this anymore. And I had another question. Is it like a meta paper? So basically, could you, for example, if you're a really aspiring PhD student and you type in an amazing paper, can you just use the text, the graphics, the formulas and all that stuff and export it into different formats, for example, for Nature and for other journals, um, the, the same text, the same content, or can you just do a paper for nature and then you have to start all new uh with one for another journal um it's possible to do that and um actually some users um yeah um, use cyclo like this and let's let's take your example nature of course um all researchers want to publish in nature because it's uh, it's a high impact journal 
and um, you could select the template from Cyflow for Nature and you do the submission for Nature, but um, you're not lucky, you don't get into Nature, but of course you wanna try a different journal. And then all you have to do is select a different journal in Cyflow, export it again, and redo the submitting, and that's it. Um, or another example would be um, in science, more and more um, preprints are, are common. So it's not just like you take your research and, and publish it with a, with a publisher like Springer or Elsevier, but that you take your research um, and put it on a preprint server where it's open access, accessible for everyone. And of course, those preprint servers need formatting again. And this is something uh, where we don't have to worry in Cyflow. You just select the right template. Um, you want to, you, uh, you choose the right template and then export it. And again, um, Cyflow does the preprint formatting for you. Now, a lot of people there are really excited. Let us uh, go down a little bit into the details. What kind of papers can you publish? I would assume since you already have nature, uh, chemical formulas would work. Um, pictures, most likely would work, um, uh, complex mathematical formulas, w what does work and uh, what doesn't? Can you, for example, also put the picture of a molecule in there? <laughs> yeah, um, so um, I would like to mention, I'd uh, like to do, uh, uh, talk about two points here. So first of all, um, probably if you're in physics, if you're in, um, um, in math, you probably want to stick to LaTeX, actually, because this is this is your perfect tool to write complex equations and everything. So I would really say that Cyflow uh, is an alternative for all those researchers who are using uh, Microsoft Word and Google Docs right now. And the second thing is, um, so you mentioned chemical drawings. Um, we could talk about um, figures, we could talk about charts, and so on and so on. So um, for every research discipline, you need to keep certain things in mind that are very specific. And so SciFlow is very a niche program. It's just meant for doing one thing, right research. And we don't want to cover everything. So what we are actually doing is try to integrate all those very good tools that are out there and try not to redo them, but instead of integrate them to Cyflow so that the researchers can use their tools they're, um, they're working with right now in Cyflow. And I think the most um, um, yeah, uh, important um, um, example here is the talking about the references. So there are lots of great, you see the reference managers where you collect all your references. And, and all your citations and so on. And there are great reference managers out there, uh, well well done programs that have been there for years um, and are, and are uh, widespread already. And we don't want to redo them in Cyflow, but integrate them. And this is exactly what we did. So Citavi, Mendeley, Zotero, EndNote, um, these are all tools that are integrated to Cyflow. And yeah, I think this is a good benefit for the users that they that they can stick to their to their use programs. All they have to do is to change from Microsoft Word to Cyflow. That's the only thing. Hmm. I know a friend of mine, he wrote his PhD thesis in the late 80s, early 90s, and he actually had to build up a database, an access database to get his uh, citations all there in place. And you just take this out with using already um um, a citation engine that's already out there. Um, I was curious when you've been talking, um, when you have like several authors, it's, it's always a thing of reputation. It's always a thing of pride who came up with a pride idea. Can you actually tell like, um, after the paper is published and there's one good idea, all the colleagues love. And then one of the authors says, I wrote it. It was my idea. Can you actually then have a look who wrote which piece of the paper when you still have it in Cyflow? <laughs> the short answer is no, no, we can't do this. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I, I, I do believe it's, it's a very interesting paper. We all, uh, very interesting idea to, um, make it easier to submit papers. You're integrating a lot of tools 
And um, my understanding right now is that you're not looking at mathematics, at physics, like we said with LaTeX. Um, but um, I've I've seen medicine, I've seen economics, social studies, stuff like this. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, everybody would like to learn more about SciFlow, go down here in the show notes. There is a link to our blog post, which contains the company website. As always, I say, sorry, guys, there's just one blog post. If we have ever to change anything, we'll do it on a blog post. It's it's just not feasible to uh, change this in hundreds of places at the same time. We are talking because you are the winner, finalist and winner, winner, congratulations again, of the uh, Content Shift Accelerator Program 2020. And um, I would like to get a tiny bit into what did content shift for you and for what type of startups would you recommend they recommend an application? Yeah. So um, I actually have to mention that we, we applied for content shift, I think two years ago and didn't made it to the final round. <laughs> and now two years later, um, we're actually the winner. And this is something um, the team is very excited about. Um, yeah, as you may imagine. So, and, and it, it, it shows really the progress we've made um, over the last years. Um, so we knew about the content shift for a quite long time. And I, I went to the website um, at the beginning of the year and saw that the jury of the content shift is basically the who is who of the German book industry. You find Talia, you find Hugen Google, you find Wiley. Um, Wiley, of course, it's very was very interesting for us because we are in the same industry of um, um, scientific publications. And um, uh, Cornelian was there, and I, I thought, like, okay, this is um, yeah, this is basically the who is who of the German book industry, and um, I would be really keen to get their feedback their views on SciFlow. Um, and why not win 10,000 euros? That would also be nice. Um, so um, so yeah, we, we did the application, we were selected for the final round, and then there was the, this great workshop um, um, weekend, or it was during the week, but it's called workshop weekend, um, starting of September, where um, where we met for two days. Of course, we, we kept our distance and we're masked all the time. But uh, uh, those discussions there, um, and there was there was so much worth in it because um, these are these are the guys that know what they're talking about, and to get feedback from them uh, from them is is just great. So I would recommend content shift to those startups. Who are, of course, in the content industry, and um, are are looking for feedback, um, basically. Um, and since I think almost every startup should look for feedback, <laughs> um, I, I, basically, I can recommend this program to any startup in the content in the content area. Um, it if you made it to the uh, to the final round where the workshop began to set definitely pays off and it's worth the application i i once heard in my life that there uh, there's one word that describes startups that are not looking for feedback they're called dead <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah. um so basically there was everything i want to ask you i just wish to thank you very much for being my guest best of luck for SciFlow, and um hope to see you again in the future Thank you so much, Joe, for having me today. Thank you. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.